Welcome back. We're glad to know that you're still there and uh, watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Right now we're going to be looking at what is happening in the school system and see if there are other solutions. We are in a country where the school system is epileptic, the infrastructure is decaying and the standards is going down. Well, uh, we're thanking God that at least there is a private sector that will take off the burden a little bit from the government. But is there something else that we can still do about the educational system? So we are here to discuss with uh, um, the CEO, Chief Executive Officer of Global International Secondary School and College, uh, in the person of uh, Madam Abolaji Osime. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Okay. One of the solutions that people feel that should be introduced in Nigeria, if it is not there already, is uh, homeschooling. Mm -hmm. As it stands now, is that something obtainable in Nigeria? Is it having a legal backing that you can homeschool your child? Um, I don't think it has a legal backing because every child is supposed to be in school in the traditional setting of schools. But remember what happened during COVID, because everybody got homeschooled. So COVID changed a lot of stuff. It changed a lot of things. And it opened our eyes to let us know that there are alternatives to traditional education. And in other countries, there's homeschooling. And they're doing very well. So when you do not have the infrastructure, and you don't have the um, facilities to be able to educate all your students, then you have to look at alternatives. And that's what Nigeria is not doing effectively. So it's unfortunate that we have over 20 million out of school when we can look at alternatives to, you know, to ensure that they have an education. It's very important. You know, so Let's first of all start by enumerating some of the things that uh, uh, have brought the educational system in Nigeria down to its knees, mm -hmm. remove the private sector, for instance, and then give us a, the reason we are where we are educationally. I think it's unfortunate we are where we are of, um, we shouldn't be where we are. There's a lot of funding that goes into education through uh, UBEC, particularly. There's a lot of money that is available for education. And the SDG is very clear that, you know, in terms of education, it's very important. A nation that does not educate its citizens is a nation that is going to fail anyway. So the challenge is that we do not have enough schools. So when you look at um, the kind of money that is being pumped into education, then you ask yourself, how come we don't build more schools? How come the governors do not have on their manifesto when they go for, you know, they say all of those things, but when it comes to reality, we do not see the schools. So you go to areas, very rural areas, no schools at all. So the kids are there, they're out of school, they're on the roads, and then you say to yourself, this is the human capital of Nigeria. 20 million out of school, if they were in school and they were skilled, then Nigeria is better off for it. How come government cannot connect the dots to say, if I do not educate my citizens, then I am doing myself an injustice. Because at the end of the day, they're going to build the economy of Nigeria. They're going to improve the GDP if they're skilled. Nigeria has so many resources, and our unemployment is 35%. Poverty rate is 40%. So we need to think and say, the most important thing that we need to do for our children is to ensure they're educated. We do not have a choice. Why are people all leaving the shores? You know, people are leaving Nigeria. And they, they're going to serve other nations. Do you understand? So we are, there's such a brain drain, but it's like government doesn't care. And they're not even saying, what can we do about it? It's so sad. You know, I feel very pained that so many kids are out there who can be doing... Um, brilliant kids. Brilliant kids. Well, you are in the sector, and yeah. you are privy to all that you are privy to, and some of which you are letting us in on right now. But you also interface with government officials who are in charge of policies and all of that. Am I correct? Yes. Um, have you done anything with regards to suggesting the, that homeschooling be legalized, seeing that it could bridge this gap? Now that you've made up to realize that it's not legal yet, the country have you suggested that it be legalized um one of the things we're doing we have a foundation called tex foundation which actually was set up by the vice president so i'm part of it i'm one of the trustees and one of the things that we're doing in the north east and the northwest of nigeria a thousand students we're using the radio program to actually educate them so most of them can actually be at home as well so in effect 
the thing about Nigeria is that when you want to legalize something, you go through a lot. You have to go through the Senate. You have to pass a bill. Because as, pa as far as the Nigerian education policy is concerned, students have to be in school. In fact, if you are not in school, they can arrest your parent. That's what the law says. So until the government, and what we're saying to government is, with technology now, you can, anybody can be educated anywhere in the world. So you can be at home and a teacher can be teaching you. In fact, my teachers can be teaching from my classroom and teaching students all over. So the critical thing that government needs to understand is that how am I going to give access to the millions? We have 60% of 200 million that are young people in Nigeria. How do I give access? What are the options? Then they should speak to private sector. We're, we're engaging government all the time. We talk to government all the time. We provide the solutions. We say to government, why don't you have broadband in schools? Why don't we get uh, corporate organizations to give devices? Why don't we partner with MTN to give low internet, you know, um, not cost effective or even zero internet? So if we can say to ourselves, the most important thing is that, can we get our students educated, our children, even the ones in school? When you even look at the ones in school, they're not even getting the education because literacy and numeracy is very, very low in Nigeria. So we have to really, as a group, not just what you're doing, putting it out there, very important, but everybody has to come together, corporates, because at the end of the day, the corporates are the ones going to hire these young people. And when they hire them, they complain all the time that they're not fit for purpose, that they cannot use them. Some of them cannot write letters and they have left university. Do you understand? They have gone through four years of university. Half of the time, university is on strike anyway. So what on earth are we doing? So you've made these suggestions with the gov to the government. Mm -hmm. What are the responses? And how do you read their um, responses or lack of response? Is it a lack of political will? Is it corruption? How do you assess their response or lack of it? I think if you remember that the Minister of Education himself had mentioned, the current one, that one of the regrets is that he didn't do anything about out of school. Eight years eight years so you know I, on, you see on, so unless you have the the point is if you're in power and you're a minister you are the one that can do something mm -hmm. we can suggest to you but we cannot force your hand do you understand yeah. you know we had i've had occasions to meet with many many government officials and we have preferred solutions from private sector and we're saying even private sector nobody's supporting us but we're doing our best to educate the nigerian child but we do not have the capacity you know, to take every student who wants to come. If I had the capacity and government can say, I will give you scholarship, I will take all of the out of school into my school. I will educate them in my school. But I'm going to have to pay teachers to do that. So basically, government has to look at it and say, if Nigeria is going to move forward, because it's like we have a time, uh, a bomb that is ticking and we are not even aware. And these kids, if you do not use them, they become liabilities. 20 million can either be the best and be a gold mine for Nigeria, or it can be a serious liability. It can, these are people that Boko Haram and all of these people are recruiting. So why are we not connecting the dots to say we need to educate these kids? We need to educate the girl child. We need to ensure every child has skills and they have a job. Reduce unemployment and make sure everybody is productive. And then we have a good society. It's so easy, it's so simple, that you wonder why we're not paying attention to it. So it worries me all the time. And I really, I would say political will is lacking in most cases. Some governors are doing excellently well. I know Lagos State is trying very hard. The commissioner is very forward looking and she's doing her best. And some other states, but we need to do more from federal as well. The policies need to change. For example, our curriculum now. We're talking about 21st century. We're talking about AI. We're talking about robotics. We're talking about coding. Any job you're going to take, if you don't have tech skills, you're in trouble. Yet, we have not uh, reviewed our curriculum to include all the skills in it. So how are we saying we're educating for 21st century? How are we saying we're educating for jobs that are not even, we cannot even imagine? Why are we being left behind when everybody's moving forward? It's very frustrating. You know? So those are the things that we just have to look at alternative. Technology has given us an opportunity to do so much now, to educate the 20 million in the, in, with their parents. The only challenge sometimes when I look at homeschooling is when they're at home, who is going to sort of teach them? It has to be their parents. So government has to have a plan if they're going to use homeschooling because homeschooling is important. It, it, it makes a world of difference. When our students during COVID were at home, they did they did well. Their parents were right beside them. There was no distraction. They had to focus on their work. So I know that if the parent does, but most parents go to work. But if you're not even going to work, can you be trained by government to actually teach your child? 
Can we have retired um, um, uh, teachers or principals to be involved in the communities to gather these kids together? Numeracy and literacy, early education. Let them have that foundation. Can we do that? It's so easy to do. So you just wonder why um, these things are not in place. You know, that's, that, that's, that's just the issue. You know, I'm excited that you're here. Uh, you are in the system. Yesterday, which was Technophile, Tuesday on the breakfast, I had a web designer who's also into coding. Okay. And I, I did ask this question about the curriculum and how you know, inclusive it is of AI. And he, he was not in a position to give that answer. So I'm happy you're here. But one of the things he said is that uh, most school owners are in it for profit and may not have included some things. So you are here. Tell me how, what is the curriculum? Is there a unified for the private and the public schools? And if it is not, what do you have in your curriculum in the private sector? I do about four curriculums. I do the British, I do the American, I do the Nigerian. And I think what was the fourth one again? No, three curriculums. Nigerian, British, Canadian, and yeah, Nigerian, British, Canadian, and American. I do four curriculums. And the reason why I do four curriculums is that a lot of my students go abroad. And I don't want them to be shocked. For example, in WAEC, there is no calculus in WAEC. There's no advanced function in WAEC. If you want to be an engineer, you must know this thing. So unfortunately, a lot of the students who go to Canada, they'll get there. High school students have already done this, and they've done well. So your parent goes and they spend $35,000 the student feels sent back to Nigeria. So our curriculum is not looking at the standard, world standard curriculum. What we should be focusing on is that what is the world talking about in terms of educating the child, not just the Nigerian child, because the world is flat. So uh, students should be able to go anywhere and excel and compete. So that's why we're advocating that Every curriculum, they, right now they have not included, what we do in global is as extracurricular. Because it's extracurricular, we do coding, we call um, uh, 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 people who are trainers to come and train them. But because it's extracurricular and it's not tested, you know, students just do it for the sake of doing it. Um, somebody was just telling me a story the other day of this 16-year-old who, during the holiday, just finished work, went to the US, did the course for three or four months in hacking or some app development, came back, and when they wanted to hire her, 16 years old, not gone to university, she asked for 66, 50,000 naira. So the, her boss had to say to her, ah, that's too high. Oh. We know you are worth it because you know your stuff. We will give you 350,000 naira. She has not gone to university. Meanwhile, university graduates are walking around the streets. They cannot even get a job. And this girl just did a six-month course. So there are courses that will breach, even post-secondary. What we are saying to government is vocational skills. Nigeria... And the jam that they've just finished now, it will be about 1.9 million every single year that applies for jam. Out of that, we can only take 600,000 places. So what happens to the 1.3 million that can, don't have places? Why can't we have this post-secondary vocational skills and innovation skills so they can do short courses pending the time they go to university? Why don't we make sure that we push that so that everybody is educated? Because at the end of the day, we are going to grow the economy of Nigeria. When we resolve the solutions, the problems that Nigeria has, everybody is going to be happy. The private sector will make money. Government will know that um, we are moving forward. So it's something that uh, we have to pay attention to. And that's what all nations are doing. Okay. I'd like you to revisit what you have said before. Some of the challenges that might be faced if we uh, adopt homeschooling. What are these things that need to be addressed before we can succeed in it? Uh, homeschooling, you know, like I said, homeschooling is important in the sense that, like during the insurgency, for example, rather than the students to just not have any education, um, emergency times like that, or areas where there are no schools. But like I said, um, government has to be deliberate about it. Because when they say that we're deliberate and intentional, which means we must train the parents in order to be able to you know, um, teach the kids. Because there's no point putting them in the home when the parent doesn't understand maths or doesn't know how to teach them. So what's the point? Or we can say, can we do a community program whereby we can gather all those kids in the community center and then we can get teachers, like UBEC trained a lot of teachers, and we can get some teachers to go there and teach them. The radio program we're doing now, it is, um, it's in collaboration with BESTA, which is the program for World Bank. And uh, teachers are there that are training them all over the place. So there is nothing that cannot be done. But whoever is training and teaching these um, students also must be trained and must be able to teach and must have some kind of 
at least if they cannot have a qualification we must know that these parents can actually teach they speak english they write english you know that's that's one of the the, the only drawback is that that's the drawback i see that whoever is at home with them might not be able to do it so we might have to supplement and get maybe other trainers to go into the homes so before, uh, yeah, well, time will not allow us to push this any further. But, you know, talking about the fact that our curriculum is still not, <laughs> cannot compete with international standard is a mm. major concern, isn't it? Mm. And that uh, begins to raise the questions about those in charge of the education in the country, especially at the federal level. Yeah. What would you say as we, as we wrap this up in, in regards to that? No, the, the, the reason why we have an, uh, high unemployment right now and we have high poverty rates is the fact that we're not skilling our students. So the point is that government has to look at that. Do you want to reduce unemployment? If you want to reduce unemployment, include the skills that the private sector wants. If private sector wants to employ, and they say, I want you to be able to do FinTech and all of that, and you don't have the skills, then they will not employ you. So go to the private sector and say, what are the skills you need? Then let us now connect with the private sector. Universities talk to private sector. Now review our curriculum, not just at the um, K-12, not just at the secondary school level, up to university. Let's review our curriculum in line with what private sector wants, so our private sector can hire them. That's what I'll say to government. So that must be, there must be a connection from that point of view. Okay, we would like to thank you for coming on the program. This is uh, Abolaji Osime, CEO of Global International Secondary School and College. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank for you so much. Thank happening. you for having me. Thank you. We do hope that the relevant people are listening to this and they're watching us now. Solutions have to come if we want our nation to grow because a nation that does not uh, educated citizens is bound to fail, according to how uh, Mrs. Osime put it. Um, it's still the breakfast on uh, Plus TV Africa, and we'll take a very short break now, and we'll be joined by the sports person that will be taking us around the world as well. Stay with us.